everybody. Happy Tuesday. Uh, I am uh, going to be talking about field blends today. And so this is kind of, you know, we've talked about fermentation a lot because obviously fermentation is so important in the production of wine, right? We would not have fermentation. I'm sorry. We would not have wine if we don't have fermentation. So it is super, super important. But so this is kind of an extension of that in the fact that fermentation is going to occur um, together with multiple varieties. So what we're talking about today is field blends. And so when we are talking about a field blend, it's kind of super simple, right? Blends are really, really common in today's wine world, right? In fact, I think there might actually be more wine out there. I have no stats on this, but I think there may be more wine out there that are blends rather than actual single varietals. And so when we are making blends, right, they can be made in various ways. And these decisions are once again winemaker decisions. And field blends are actually one of the oldest methods that has been used. In fact, the, you know, when people first came to America, and especially when they first came to California, and they were planting these vineyards, they just had vines, and they just were planting whatever they had. So they were planting multiple varieties all in the same vineyard, right next to each other. All, you know, one row of this, one row of that, one row of the next variety. And these blends are, you know, all a field blend means is that it is a blend consisting of at least two different grape varieties, and they are planted together next to each other in that single vineyard. And then here's the key, they're harvested at the same time and they're going to ferment together, okay? And they're going to age together. So we have the same vines, we have the varieties in the vineyard. They get harvested together, they get processed together, they ferment together and they're going to get aged together. That is different than our typical blends where we harvest our fruit at the different times, they ferment separately, and then they go into their barrels or into the tanks or whatever they're going into and they age separately. And then right before we are going to bottle, we're gonna take our choices and we're gonna put them all together to create a blend, okay? So field blends have been a traditional thing for a long, you know, long, long, long time ago, and kind of some common grapes go together. We have Zinfandel, Carignan, Petite Syrah. They go together very well. And the concept of why we do field blends like this is that these single varieties are actually going to complement each other. So these three varieties are kind of equal in their depth of color and their alcohol content, or actually even better, some are lighter in alcohol, some are higher in alcohol, but they all are going to come together to create this perfect blend that has you know, the rich tannins and the ability to age. The important aspect is that they must thrive in the same climate and they must at least enjoy similar soil content, concepts. Now, the cool thing is, is that we don't need to just have field blends of red grapes and field blends of white grapes. We can have field blends that are a combination of both, okay? So the white grapes, you know, they basically are going to add some acidity to that field blend. And we know that acidity is super, super important to have that structure to the wine and obviously to the ageability of the wine. So now another concept that I find intriguing about field blends is that, you know, even though the vines are planting together, they don't all ripen at the same time. And that is a big concern with field blends. So like it's going to, you're not going to have Pinot Noir, which is an early ripening grape in the same thing, at, in the same field as a Grenache, which is a late ripening. Because if you're going to harvest those, neither one is going to be super happy, okay? So we want to make sure that the grapes that we are putting into that field blend, that they're planted together, 
are actually somewhat suitable to each other and that they are kind of able to be harvested similarly around the same time. So the other aspect is that we need to understand not just the physiological ripeness of those grapes that are involved, but the phenological ripeness is also incredible. So if we take like Zinfandel and Petite Syrah, they work together well in a field blend because Zinfandel is going to ripen at much higher sugar content and Petite Syrah, although it's ripe at similar, at kind of the same time, its sugar content is much lower, but phenologically it still has all of those flavor components that we love about Petite Syrah. So since Zinfandel has higher sugar and Petite Syrah has lower sugar, when they come together in that field blend, that averages out so that we're not going to have a super high alcoholic wine. But they're going to be able to provide their own distinct dimension and complexity to the wine, and we're gonna get that flavor bomb of a field blend. They're going to be able to basically still show the terroir of that field that they are in, in that vineyard that they're in. So field blends are not unique to any specific region. They can be found anywhere around the world. They do kind of seem to be a bit less popular now. Uh, you know, in the olden days, like, like I said earlier, as people first came into California, that was all there was. Now there seems to be more specialization of which varieties are in which vineyards or in which location of the vineyard. And I think that has to do with the understanding, the more knowledge we now have about the individual grape varieties, right? The other problem is, when you do a field blend, it is really difficult to decide when to harvest because you have so many grape varieties that are ripening at different times. So if we have a single variety in a single section of that vineyard, we can focus all on that and pick that fruit at the exact time. Whereas if we have three, four, five different varieties in a single thing and we're trying to do a field blend, we kind of have to pick a time that is ah, okay for them all, but not ideal for them all, okay? So since they uh, ripen at different times, if we harvest them all together, they also are going to ferment at different times. Different varieties take longer times to ferment. So if I'm taking these all these different varieties and I'm throwing them in together and I'm asking them to ferment all together, it can lead to an additional problem of maybe not having a complete fermentation. So that's a negative in terms of winemaking. So it might be another reason why we see less and less field blends. So let me know, do you like blends? Does it matter to you if it's a field blend or it's just a blend of wine? And you know, leave a comment, let me know what your thoughts are on field blends. Do you have a favorite field blend? Do you have a favorite blend? Do you know the difference? And that's a great question. Can you tell the difference if it is a field blend versus if it is just a normal blend where we blend the grape, the wine together prior to bottling? So hope you all have a great Tuesday. Enjoy yourselves. Hope you have something fantastic in your glass tonight. Leave me a comment, save, like, share, all of that good stuff. Be sure to head over to Dracina Wines and check out all of our wines and everything that we are doing and previous blog posts. And if you're in Paso, schedule a tasting with us so we can take you through our entire lineup. We are just getting ready to officially release our um, 2021 Cinnabari, which is a brand new wine for us. And we will talk to you soon. Slancha.